Okay. So we have with us uh, Jasmine Goel, ma'am. Uh, Jasmine, ma'am, is uh, vice principal for the School of Architecture, uh, head academics, and uh, also, the, uh, also the hostel committee member. Uh, then we have Rohan, uh, Rohan Shogle. Uh, he heads the student services and the one point contact for all your student life queries. And then we have uh, Shivani ma'am with us. Uh, Shivani ma'am is manager uh, administration plus the warden for SH1 and other girls hostel. Uh, apart from ma'am, we have two student volunteers who are currently residing at the hostel to share their experience of the hostel life at Anantyu. And then uh, admission team members. Uh, so, uh, uh, before I give this platform to Rohan to uh, share all the details about the hostel, let me uh, show a video of three hostels that we currently have and what are the facilities we uh, currently uh, offering to the students. So, I'm sharing my screen. Rohan, just please confirm if my audio video is clear. Yeah, I'll do that. Is my screen visible? Your screen is visible, Abhishek. Experience is yes. Yet. Let's save this for later. This is our in campus student hostel one. Uh, Abhishek, I guess there is some lag in, in the audio and video. Let's be honest, no one cooks anything other than Maggie here. Besides, why would you ever need to cook when we have this amazing mess that serves four delicious meals a day? Uh, Rowan, is it, it was not audible? The earlier part of the video was not audible, uh, Abhishek. Just now we are able to hear the sound. So if you could uh, restart, I think. Uh, from the okay. Bhagat Singh Hostel? Uh, we can play it from the start, I think. Okay, from the start. Okay. Experience. Slush cream. Only at... You know what? Let's save this for later. This is our... Is it audible now? Student Hostel 1. This is our second in campus hostel, Bhagat Thank you. 
And if you're still not satisfied, we have our very own hostel shop that serves everything you can possibly imagine, like ice cream. Just be sure not to eat ice cream all the time. Or it Luckily we have this infirmary with all the basic first aid supplies. And I'm not too heavily injured. So let's head over to the gym. The gym. A place where we train to unleash our full potential. We can get to the lush green jungles behind our water. Yes, so now over to Rohan for taking us through for the further details about the hostel You're facility right, that we have. All of them have something, every one of them has something new and something, you know, unique to offer to you. And they're all very... Rohan? Yes, Abhishek. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, just let me know if... Uh, just let me uh, introduce Yuvraj sir has just joined. Uh, Yuvraj uh, sir is the uh, CFO of Anand National University, HR head and admin head. Yes, Rohan. Hi, hi, very good morning and sorry for joining a little late. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Good morning to one and all over here. Suran, there are a lot of messages to me that there was a legging. So for the benefit of all at the end of uh, the session today, I will share the link of the hostel uh, in the chat box for the benefit of all. Uh, is my screen visible to all? Abhishek, can you confirm? Yes, yes. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Abhishek, for uh, introducing all the members who have joined today's hostel information session. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the Residence Life team at Anant National University uh, that in the next 15 to 20 minutes, uh, through this short presentation that we have, uh, I would like to give a complete overview, uh, a brief introduction about what the residence life at Anant National University looks like. Uh, I work with Professor Jasmine Goyal and Mr. Yura Singh Zala uh, in the Office of Student Services. Uh, through which we look after the entire student well-being and the student life experience when they are here at the university. 
and one of the most crucial and most enjoyable pleasant parts of the student life at anand uh, is the residence life so we will quickly have an overview of uh, the different hostels facilities that we have what kind of a residence life experience can a student ex uh, expect once they come to the hostel to the campus we will touch upon few important pointers related to the hostel admission fees process and so on we will go through some of the important rules and guidelines when it comes to the hostel uh, then we move we will move towards the essential documents that are required uh, while you are coming to the hostel when you are taking admission to the hostel and we will end with the contact information some very important email ids so that by the end of this webinar any kind of questions queries that you have related to not just the hostel but entire uh, student life at anand you can use these email ids and contact us and as abhishek said we will have two students at the end of the session uh, who will also share briefly about their experience uh, they are currently living at the hostel and after this session we will open up for question and answers where through the chat box you can send us your queries or questions whatever you have related to the hostel and we'll be more than happy to answer them so let's begin so currently in uh, anant national university we have three full fledged hostels with us the first one is student housing one uh, student housing one has four blocks a b c and d there are separate blocks for boys and girls the second hostel that we have is mayflower hostel uh, you can see the photos uh, those are the representative images of the hostel in mayflower there are going to be se separate floors for boys and girls and third hostel uh, is the bhagat singh hostel which is a girls only hostel as we speak currently students are staying in all the three hostels and there are different number of vacancies across the hostels so whoever in the next upcoming batch is willing to join the hostel uh, we will be checking where the vacancies are in each of these hostel and then we will be proceeding with the hostel admission process accordingly in the three hostels the student housing one which is sh1 uh, and the bhagat singh hostel these two hostels are inside the campus and mayflower hostel is just opposite to the campus boundary so what kind of rooms are we talking about when when a student takes admission to the hostel at anand uh, every student is uh, get, getting a double occupancy room so across all three hostels all the rooms that we have are double occupancy rooms meaning in one room two people will be sharing uh, and these two people will be given a certain set of facilities inside the room we will go through the facilities one by one so every student will get a double occupancy room which will be fully air conditioned ac will be provided by us only every student will get a bed with a mattress gadda as we call it in hindi and a pillow so the mattress and the pillow will be provided from the hostel management side the bed sheet quilt or chadar and the pillow cover has to be carried by the student themselves further each student will be given a study table and a chair uh, there will be a bookshelf given to each student mirror personal cupboard for their belongings with a lock and key there will be dustbin provided with the room and inside the room there will be cleaning done by a dedicated house cleaning staff that will be done twice a week the mayflower hostel that we saw in the previous slide uh, which is just outside the campus that has a attached washroom whereas in the student housing one sh1 and bhagat singh there are common washrooms so these are the kind of facilities that uh, come when you uh, book a room those are given to each and every student and these form the inside room facilities moving further to the common facilities each of the hostel has a unique set of common facilities so in the previous slide we saw all the facilities which are there inside the room but in the hostel in addition to the rooms that the students occupy there are some really wide and vibrant spaces uh, which are common spaces so generally we observe that students go to their room only uh, during the night time and they really enjoy being in our common facilities and common areas throughout the day so one by one we will go through what all common facilities that we have in all the three hostels first is a mess facility so uh, once a student comes to the hostel uh, their meals are taken care by the hostel committee uh, the hostel team 
every student uh, is given four times meals. So there is breakfast, lunch, evening snacks, and dinner. Uh, it's a very diverse menu. Uh, talking about diversity at the hostel, uh, we have more than uh, 550 students who are currently uh, staying with us across the three hostels. And just to get a glimpse into what kind of student population we are talking about, who are the people with whom you will be living, these 550 plus students are coming from more than 120 cities from India and more than 20 states represented. So people from different geographies, different backgrounds, all together coming in a very nice congenial space. It's a fantastic experience to be in. And to make sure that to the maximum extent, their food requirements are satisfied, uh, we form a mess menu. So every month a master menu is created and we make sure that there is optimum nutrition, diversity in terms of what kind of food options are there. And this hostel menu gets frequently feedback from the students and we keep on changing it to ensure variety. We have in terms of safety and security, there are security guards positioned in all the hostels and they are positioned around the clock. So 24 by 7 security services are there. Entry in and out of the hostel is controlled by either a biometric or a register, which means that only the authorized personnel, that is the hostel students, the hostel team and the administration team are allowed to enter the hostel. So it's a very secure premise and without permission, non-hostel stakeholders are not allowed in the hostel. In all the common areas that we have in the hostel, there is a foolproof CCTV coverage, again, an added safety point. All the three hostels are equipped with high-speed Wi-Fi so that students while they are at the hostel also can continue on their academic work and have com complete access to internet. We have a general store in the SH1 hostel that we just saw. Uh, we have a general store uh, that caters to the basic needs of students when it comes to groceries, some day-to-day -day items, so that they need not uh, go out of the campus for every small requirement. Most of the requirements are satisfied in the general store itself. So be it biscuits, be it uh, groceries, any kind of utility items, maybe washing powder or something. All of these things are available in the general store then and there. There are pantry facilities uh, in addition to the mess facility that we have. So by pantry, we mean that suppose uh, on a particular day, a student wants to prepare something for, for themselves and they want the equipment and a space to do that. So all the hostels are equipped with dedicated pantry areas that if suppose uh, they, they don't want to have something in the mess, but at midnight they are working and let's say at two o'clock someone gets hungry. They already have a Maggie sourced from the general store that we have in the hostel and they can go to the pantry and make their own food at any time. Access is available 24 by 7. The next common facility that we have is laundry facility. Currently we have uh, washing machines for all the students uh, who are staying in the hostel and uh, students can use their uh, the washing machines that are provided and wash their own clothes. But we are also coming up with a complete end-to-end -end system of laundry wherein students need not wash the clothes themselves. They can just give the used clothes to our laundry setup and the laundry uh, team will uh, deliver the washed and ironed clothes back to them. So we are coming up with this proposal. Whenever it is finalized, the team will communicate to you. In addition to the study table and study area inside the room, there are uh, study dedicated study areas, drafting rooms, and lounge spaces throughout the hostels where students can come together at any time uh, throughout the day, uh, where they can come together, collaborate on different projects, just have a nice conversation around, uh, sit and work together. So those kind of study areas also are there in the hostels. Uh, RO drinking water is provided. There is a dedicated gym uh, in the SH1 hostel. Now, one very important point when we talk about common facilities is that all the three hostels has its own unique set of common facilities. The, uh, and any hostel student who takes admission to either of the hostel is allowed 100% access to all the common facilities across the three hostels. For example, if there is a hostel student staying in Mayflower, that student will have complete access to all the facilities, common facilities, which are then in SH1 hostel as well. We have full-fledged gym uh, in the SH1 hostel. In terms of medical support, we have a dedicated infirmary in space. So any kind of basic illness, sickness, or medical support that is required by students at the hostel, 
this is the first point of uh, support that is available in the hostel premises itself basic first aid and medication and support will be provided over here we also have a nurse who is on campus so any kind of consultation also will be done then and there there are beds uh, in the infirmary so in cases where isolation is required that facility is also available with the attached washroom so these are the kind of common facilities that all the students can use in addition to the facilities provided inside the room. A few moments back, we talked about what kind of residence life experience uh, are we talking about? And we talked about diversity, like how the Anantio hostel community is a very vibrant and uh, diverse community. I can see that in today's webinar also, about 65 uh, people have joined, I, I guess 50 to 60 will be parents and students. So within this 50, 60 people also, there will be so much diversity. Now imagine a place where there are more than 500 students staying together and such a diverse pool of uh, communities staying together. Everyone is from different uh, programs and different years. There will be someone from product design. There will be someone from communication design and architecture student, a senior staying with a junior fellowship students, master students, all staying together in a close-knit community. So it's a really fantastic experience for peer-to-peer -peer learning. And uh, it's a very nourishing, safe, and comfortable environment with all the hostel team in place and all the common facilities that we discussed. We also try to make sure that the hostel experience when the student is here for four to five years is not a monotonous experience. There is something or, or the other that is consistently happening. So students step up and students take up initiatives where they can make their hostel life exciting and enjoyable. So they, they keep on doing different initiatives like movie screenings or recently when there was FIFA World Cup, they did screening of matches. So such kind of initiatives, they do festival celebrations, small kind of indoor sports tournament. So a lot of things keep on happening when students are at the hostel. There is a team of uh, hostel student representatives uh, these are student representatives selected from within the hostel students themselves who work with the hostel committee to make sure that the student feedback is heard and whatever concerns, grievances of students are there, they are resolved uh, in the best possible way. And whatever kind of expectations they have from the hostel, those are also taken into consideration and these, these are worked upon. Because there are uh, students staying with students, uh, where it differs as an experience is if, if someone is staying on campus, that person is surrounded by his peers or their peers. So any kind of academic doubt, any kind of query, whatever kind of support they need, they can anytime contact their senior, they can contact their roommate. So that 24 by 7 peer to peer support is the biggest advantage when you're staying in the hostel. We also do uh, regular health checkup camps where we check for the basic vitals of students and uh, through the health checkup camp, student can check their uh, health condition. And if we need, uh, if we can come to know that someone needs support, the necessary support is given. Uh, in in Anant Hostel, uh, we are very much particular that we are having zero tolerance to ragging or harassment. There has been no case of ragging or harassment so far, but and we as a hostel team, as a residence life team, are always there to make sure that each and every student who is there in the hostel does not have to go through any kind of undesirable experience. But in case something happens, there are dedicated committees who will take strict action then and there and necessary support is given. So this is the kind of residence life by and large. Uh, this slide has a lot of information and important information. Uh, it has some important points related to hostel admission. We will go through the points one by one. The first point is about the hostel and mess fees. Uh, for the academic year 2023-24, in this academic year, any student that takes admission to the hostel will be paying a hostel and mess fees that will be applicable for one academic year. As we saw in the previous slide, uh, there are two in-campus hostels, Bhagat Singh, which is the girls hostel, and SH1, which is a boys and girls hostel. And there is an off-campus hostel that is Mayflower, which is again a boys and girls hostel. So the off-campus hostel Mayflower, for that the fees for one academic year is rupees 220,000 to be paid in two parts, one for the monsoon semester and one for the spring semester. Again, this is the fee for the off-campus hostel Mayflower, 220,000 for one academic year. And the fees for the in-campus hostel uh, hostels 
SH1 and Bhagat Singh, that is rupees 250,000 for one academic year to be paid in two parts, one part for monsoon semester and one part for the spring semester. This is the fee component for the academic year 2023-24. There will be a 10% hike each academic year on this particular amount. And this is a comprehensive fees component that covers everything. So there is no separate cost that comes to a student. Once these fees are paid, all the in-room facilities, all the common facilities, access to all three hostels, common facilities, AC charges, electricity charges, four time meals, laundry facilities, all of that, all inclusive. This is the fees component. The next point which many people will be uh, curious about is uh, how do I book a room? If I'm interested to come to the hostel, what is the process to book a room? So the first step is of provisional booking. Uh, admissions team would have already communicated the step-by-step -step process to you in an email. Uh, we will also do that. We will send an email again after the webinar. So the first step of hostel room booking is a provisional booking, which can be done by paying a booking amount of 10,000 rupees. So after you pay 10,000, a room will be uh, provisionally put in your name, but that is not confirmed. Only when you do a final booking by paying the full hostel and mess fee for the next semester. For example, let's understand a case where suppose one student is uh, wanting to take admission to the Bhagat Singh hostel which is a girls only hostel in campus. So the fees that will be applicable for her will be 250,000 for the academic year 2023-24. So this has to be paid in parts. So half is 1,25,000. So once the student completes the payment of 1,25,000 fees, which is the hostel fees for monsoon semester, then and then the hostel room is confirmed for them. And the deadline to pay the full hostel room booking fees is uh, 9th of June, 2023. Do note that the provisional booking that has been taken from you right now of 10,000 is a part of the complete uh, hostel and mess fees. Room allocation will be done by the hostel management. So depending on how many rooms are available and where all vacancies are there across the hostels, the hostel management will do the uh, allocation of rooms. But if you have any preferences, we can discuss that in a case to case basis. But the uh, final decision of room allotment will be with the hostel management. In terms of refund policy, uh, there will be a full refund with a deduction of 5000 rupees. If someone wants to opt out from the hostel, someone has paid the fees now and uh, they want to opt out of the hostel. And if they do that and communicate that within 15 days from the start of the semester, then a full refund will be there, but there will be a deduction of 5,000 rupees as administrative charges. And after 15 days from the start of the semester, there won't be any refund applicable. So this is some of the important hostel admission process pointers. We go next. Uh, when, when all these students are here at the hostel, it is uh, very much important that certain basic rules and guidelines of the hostel are being followed. Of course, it's a very enjoyable and a very vibrant space that is almost active 24 by 7. Even at night, people are doing something, uh, working together, playing games in the table tennis room. So things are uh, always happening. Things are always active here. But while all of that is happening, there are some basic rules to be followed. So uh, we will just go through some of the most important pointers that students and uh, parents should be aware about the hostel. The room allocation will be done on a first come first serve basis as per the availability of rooms in the hostel. So that means whoever pays the hostel and mess fees in full first will be considered first for the admission and room booking. Uh, important point is about the timings of the hostel. So students can uh, go outside the hostel starting from 6 a.m. in the mo morning and the timing for them to return back to the hostel is before 10 p.m. So between 10 p.m. in the night to 6 a.m. in the morning, students are expected that they should be inside the hostel. That said, uh, we understand that there might be reasons and uh, particular uh, considerations required where students might want to go outside the hostel uh, a little late. Maybe someone wants to go and watch a movie and they want to return at 12 o'clock. So that is allowed, but there needs to be a warden. Can I ask some questions? Go uh, Someone is saying anything? I, I guess someone wanted to ask a question. So uh, what we will do, we are almost about to end the presentation. 
and once we go through all of the pointers we will open it up for question and answers that time each and every question we will address yes so, sir you can continue yeah thanks Arushan. so beyond 10 pm if students want to go out that is possible to do but again warden information and permission is uh, very much essential there is a gate pass that will be issued and this again is considering the safety and security of all the students the meal timings are given here breakfast will be from 8 to 9 30 lunch will be from 12 30 to 2 snacks from 4 30 to 6 and dinner from 8 to 9 30. now these timings have been carefully uh, curated by taking a lot of student feedbacks and academic schedules into consideration uh, we talked about hybrid hostels sh1 and mayflower being hostels where girls and boys will be there so it's a strict rule that boys are not allowed to visit the areas occupied by girls and vice versa from the hostel point of view non-hostel stakeholders and non-hostel students are not allowed to be in the hostel premises so when hostel students are like when you all will come in the hostel and join the hostel you need to make sure that only the hostel students are there in the premises uh, the furniture and fixtures in the room uh, without permission uh, altering them is not allowed but that said uh, we are very much open for creativity and creative inputs from the students if someone wants to do a graffiti or wall art or any kind of thing they can 100 percent approach us discuss it with us and once it is permitted we can look into it uh, position and consumption of alcohol in gujarat is a cognizable offense so that is not allowed smoking on campus is not allowed uh, anand is a vegetarian only campus that means only veg food uh, position and consumption is allowed on campus parents and guardians can definitely uh, come and meet their students uh, in the hostel visiting area or in the academic area uh, in the visiting hours the visiting hours are 9 a.m to 6 p.m and uh, they will it will be better if they can just inform the warden well in advance no pets are allowed in the hostel and uh, these are just some of the pointers uh, important most important ones related to hostel there is a complete hostel policy uh, in which a detailed uh, information about each and every important thing that students should know is mentioned. So we will be soon sharing the hostel policy with you for your reference. And as, as I said, uh, in the overall interest of the well-being of students and to maintain a safe and comfortable environment for all, there are different committees in place. There is a disciplinary committee, there is a hostel committee, gender equality committee, so that in case anything undesirable is happening, so immediate support and necessary action is taken then and there. So when students are coming to the hostel, uh, if each and every student is going to be our responsibility when they are here with us in the hostel. And for that, it is very much important for us to have complete details about uh, every student that is joining the hostel. So at the time of admission, at the time of checking into the hostel, which means when you actually come into the hostel to join the room, there are a set of mandatory documents that every student and parent uh, needs to carry. Please note that uh, the room book, uh, the confirmation and the actual hostel check-in will be completed only after each and every uh, of these documents will be submitted uh, to the hostel committee at the time of check-in. So hostel policy, policy student undertaking is a form uh, that is available in the hostel policy which mentions that you have read the policy and understand uh, you understand all the terms and conditions there point number two and point number three are very important uh, these are forms through which we collect information about a student's physical and mental health uh, and uh, health history so that uh, we are already aware if someone is going through any pre-existing condition what kind of support is required and we have complete information about that Parents contact information and undertaking is a different form. So uh, we will have a complete database of all the contact numbers and email IDs of all the parents so that uh, wherever and whenever required, the hostel team can get in touch with you about uh, with the parents about the student. Uh, hostel check-in form and room amenities form will be uh, two forms that will be completed during the check-in. Uh, a final copy of COVID-19 vaccination certificate is mandatory to be attached. If students have a medical insurance that they have already taken, uh, then a copy of that insurance will be helpful for us to have with us. If any particular student has any ongoing uh, medical or uh, mental health situation uh, going on, uh, then if there are any prescriptions, ongoing treatment or any history, then we would like to know that so that uh, we will be having a good knowledge to provide the necessary support. 
and as i said earlier for admission and actual check in to the hostel your fees have to be paid and uh, completed in full so the last point is a receipt of the hostel and mess fees paid so all of these uh, this is too much of information for now we will be sharing these details in 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 detail with you over an email uh, very soon Uh, these are some of the important contact information uh, parents and students you can make a note of these pointers uh, the first ones are the instagram accounts so first one is anant international university the main instagram account and the second one is anant you student life uh, people who are on instagram can go and uh, check out the instagram accounts through this you will get a complete overview and a complete glimpse into what life at anant is like what uh, hostel life is like and what the student life is like students joining the university uh, will might have any academic queries those may be routed to academic affairs so professor jasmine gohil who has also joined us in the meeting she is the associate dean of academic affairs and also the head of student services uh, so the academic affairs team will be able to solve any kind of academic queries for any kind of hostel queries you can reach out to residence life at anu.edu.in any other student life related queries when it comes to extracurriculars co curriculars events student council clubs and well being services you can write to student services at anu.edu.in and any particular queries related to fees and admissions you can contact to fees at anu.edu.in or the admissions email id so people can just take a note of all of these important contacts Uh, with this i come to the end of the presentation i hope uh, i have been able to communicate the main information and main pointers related to the hostel uh, we also have two students uh, kushal and niranjana who are currently staying with us in the hostel so i thought uh, we we thought that it will be a good thing to just hear from them about how they are feeling by being at the hostel so kushal and niranjana if you are there uh, i'd like you to just briefly tell the students and parents about your experience at the hostel uh, before that uh, uh, let me interrupt don't only just visit their instagram pages please follow them as well for future updates uh, niranjana and kushal kushal hello good morning go to the question and answer round and we can answer the queries uh, hi everyone i am niranjana sunil and kushal you want to speak yeah um hey guys i'm kushal i'm in second year of product design and so i'm also in second year moving image design moving image major so we 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 came to the hostel together right second semester after covid break yes yes <laughs> yeah so we've lived in hostel ever since we got into college and since then we've made a lot of new friends met a lot of people not only from our batch but our seniors and their seniors we've spoken a lot with them there are a lot of events that bring us together every month there is at least a small event that just gets all students to talk to each other gets all students to socialize with each other and um i think we... a lot of thing already happens throughout the day um what rohan sir said about us going back only to the rooms only to sleep is very true because we are almost always down spending time with our friends or just even working actually and even when it comes to celebrations diwali or just normal jamming sessions we have a mini amphitheater there which was shown in a few of the pictures uh, so people just come together there play instruments guitar they sing and it's just like a very lively and wholesome community here everything here is really well balanced like one thing that college spoke about that they're against dragging we are evidence of that our seniors are so very helpful we have conversations with our seniors about our futures our mess tables are like round table conferences where our seniors talk about their projects and their current situations in their final year assignments and we talk to them about our assignments and our problems faced in class how we're lagging behind on assignments and they always have something or the other to share with us about advice or just help sometimes just fun talk they're always so supportive and they also help us like you know know more about maybe places around or even within the campus if there are any events happening they kind of encourage us to join these events and just be more open and express ourselves in the way that we want to and we 
you know, just basically push ourselves. So when I remember I was in this meeting as well with my parents in my room, just all nervous, like, oh, what should I do? <laughs> should I come to hospital? And a uh, wonderful decision because everyone here, they just want to support you and we all want to like grow together in that aspect. Uh, and even when it comes to like, um, we have first aid in our um, the store here and we also have a stationery. We have Pintubaya there and we get almost everything we want in that stationery when it comes to books or our art supplies, charcoal, anything that we want. And we also have like a small discount. So it's also very budget friendly. And yeah, that's another aspect that I want to talk about. Um, and what else? We have a lot of other clubs here. Like I'm guessing they missed the clubs part of it. They were a little focused on the technical aspect. Clubs is something that's run by students, supported by all faculty members, but they're student run, student led. And best part is faculty members are so open about it. They're ready to accept help and even nudge and direct them in the right direction. We have clubs for sports, esports, events, dance. So all these people are always so busy and engrossed in all their activities that you will never see someone sitting blank and alone. There's always someone and something to do. And there is something that you like to do that is available. So I'm into basketball. And right now I'm in talks with Rohan sir about the basketball court. He knows how much I've been pestering him about it. And he's been working with it with me. And we've also found a solution for the time being. Uh, friends together, we came, we found courts. Now we go play there. And then we get the same requirements for college. So with all this, we have a very nice community here. Nothing is ever like shushed away. It's always encouraged to talk, encouraged to express. And that's like one of the best things that happened here. Definitely. Because even if you have any concerns, they always like hear you out and they do try to make provisions or accommodations so that you are comfortable and you are heard. So that is definitely one thing. <laughs> and uh, even when it comes to work, uh, we have a drafting room where people work. So otherwise, even if you want to take it back to campus, uh, we just get passes from the university. Uh, we kind of write our names and everything down so that it's safe and people are aware that we are going back to campus and we can go and we can work there. But just the drafting room facility of us working in the drafting room within the hostel is uh, it's, it's very helpful because I spent almost a, a, lot, a lot of my first year nights in that room working because we had work <laughs> but it's always fun work is never like stressful or like boring we have friends to support us and you know things are lively so it's always fun <laughs> in that aspect these communal areas the common areas are the are really amazing to work because we get input from all backgrounds like niranjana's in moving images i am in product design but we've spoken so much about our assignments to each other. I have no knowledge how camera works, but we've always shared ideas with one another and we've incorporated that in my assign in our assignments. So that's really cool about this place. Collaborative learning. We live with our seniors. We, I, my roommate's an architect. So I have worked with him, making his helping him making his models. He's worked with me, helping me make my models. And we've stayed up all night sometimes. This is something that I really enjoy here because when I was at home because of COVID, I had to do everything on my own. Brainstorming was me and the internet. It was kind of boring. But here, meeting people, seeing their views, getting support from faculty members, seeing their views about it. I speak to faculty members who are not even my professors. They don't take my classes, but they're always ready for it. That was really cool here. Definitely. Um, I think when I was during COVID and we were at home, we were having really fun assignments, but then I was also feeling a bit like alone, but after I came here, it has never been like that. It has, and the thing is, if we um, want time for ourselves, we can definitely take that out. We can be in our rooms, and it's fully customizable. Like in our a lot of our rooms, we'll have fairy lights, which we again get from the stationery, and um, we personalize it. As long as we don't do any damage or permanent damage to the the facilities that are there, we have full um, what do you say freedom to personalize our things and just make it ours. So a lot of people will have their pictures or things that they like, posters or pinned onto their board that's there. And um, people have colored lights in their room, LED lights, and it's just all, it feels very fulfilling and it's really fun. And yeah. 
that's about the hostel life in a gist. If you all need anything, there's the Instagram page. You can reach out to us there. But yeah, so that's about it. Over to Abhishek, sir. Uh, there's a little okay. question here. Um, being away from city, do we find any difficulty? So um, I lived in UAE before. So when I came here, I was on, like very honestly speaking, I was very happy because there was a new sense of freedom, but there's also like safety. Even if you have to go out, like Rohan sir said, like it's not like you have, you're not confined to anything. So you have freedom, but it's all safe. So that just makes you feel like exploring more, but in a very safe way. So I personally didn't find any particular difficulty as such. Of course, sometimes you would miss home, you would miss your parents, but then you just talk to them and then it's all fine. We have friends to support as we talk to our friends about it. And then maybe, yeah, that's it. There were no particular difficulties that we faced. And I think Kushal also feels the same. What yeah, yeah. It's the same. We've all, this is a very supportive space here. So everything they're always ready to help get acclimatized to. So yeah, there's no difficulties faced as such. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so uh, questions for the committee members. So there are few of the questions I have answered during the session uh, Rohan was taking. Uh, but there are still three four questions uh, that I would uh, like Rohan and team to answer. Uh, the first question is, uh, what is the vacancy available for new students? And are there any outdoor sports areas? Rohan? Yeah, I'm audible. Yeah, you are audible. The question is, what is the vacancy available for new students and uh, any outdoor sports areas? So I, I can say that uh, across the hostels, there are a different number of vacancies that are available. Uh, the number of vacancies keep on changing uh, on a daily basis. So I can't really give out a specific number right now. But across the hostel, uh, there you are have vacancies. vacancies. Yeah, yeah. They, students can reach out and uh, you know we can just tell them where the vacancies are number it would be difficult to tell at the moment and in terms of the sports facilities in the hostel there are indoor sports facilities where there is carom tt table there, there is uh, chess and more and more sports will be added there in terms of outdoor sports uh, we have a tie up with sanskardam sports academy uh, so this is an academy which is within the campus only so there is access to some world class facilities uh, the national sports conclave recently happened over there so you can imagine what kind of level of facilities are there. So in terms of uh, football or let's say badminton, there are a lot of sports available. There is, there is horse riding, there is archery. So all of this is done by specialists and experts from the Sanskardam Sports Academy. And since it's inside the campus only, we as a university has tie up with them. So students uh, are having dedicated time slots to access dedicated sports. So this detailed information, again, Abhishek, I can give it to you. And from the admissions team, we can communicate to the students. This is about the Sanskaran facility. At the same time, uh, we have our sports club also. So sports club brings together people who are interested in sports. There are regular practice sessions that happen. And we also do tournaments within the university. And our teams also participate across the different platforms. Yeah, so uh, I'm clubbing two questions together. Uh, do students from all years stay in the same building or is it segregated? And can we change the room if we are not comfortable later? I think the warden is the best person to answer that. <laughs> uh, yes, so students here uh, stay together in a same in a same hostel, and yes, we do allow uh, with uh, the if we have any specific request for a room change or a roommate preferences. But then that will be taken care of once with the consultation with both the students. Uh, the next question is, uh, I think uh, Niranjana has al already answered, but uh, I still want uh, uh, Shivani to answer. Can we leave the campus and go home for a few days? And yes, so of course, you can. Process you can Yes, of course, a student can go on a leave. The procedure is that before leaving for home, they need to inform me through an email. And also we have a leave register over here kept in uh, at the, the reception desk of every hostel. They need to fill in while going on leave. And even while they come back, they have to again fill in there the details. Uh, so there is one question. Uh, how many 
washroom closets are there in the common washroom area uh so for sh1 there are three washrooms and three uh, bath uh, uh, rooms bathing for areas. on each floor yes bathing areas for on each floors and i am i am I'm, I'm so sorry i am so sorry to interrupt you shivani uh, three if you say three washrooms they may assume that it is a three in numbers but it is having the total uh, number of washrooms inside if you can just uh, let them know because... there are three, three wcs and three bathing areas yes. yeah uh-huh. one area which is common washroom area for one floor right on each floor yes yes and in bhagat singh we have uh, four four on each, eight eight on each side eight eight, yes. eight eight on each eight, side eight. so in total there, there we have 16 on each, each, floor. each floor yes each floor how far is one hostel which is outside campus if you start from academic building in the 7th or 8th minute based on your speed of walking you will be at the hostel but not more than 8 minutes you will take and if you say yes. uh, from the entering of the university or the entering of the sanskardham campus and is then it's just the opposite the uh, entry from the sanskardham campus or just hardly 100 meter from the our our university entry okay so there is a question which i would answer is there a way to connect with our following peers before we join the university or campus so as informed on your offer mails uh, that uh, the session uh, would be starting from 10th of july uh, starting july or maybe late june uh, i might uh, create a whatsapp group so that you interact with uh, the fellow students but uh, not before that uh, during first year does the student of same batch stay together uh, is the room shared with seniors so the room allocation depends on the availability of the rooms and uh, as uh, clearly mentioned by rohan that that will be on a first come first basis it may happen that you may be sharing a room with any senior or also of the same batch so uh, there is a question if we take single occupancy room do we get separate washroom there is no single occupancy we have only double occupancy as you want shared yes. all the three yes. hostels are twin sharing ac rooms uh ajasuna when does the university start the start for the first year students uh this time the we are launching the uh, orientation week from 10th of july so 10th of july would be your uh, orientation day and then from there there would be one week of orientation week and then your uh, academic will start okay uh rohan uh we'll be getting to choose which hostel we want i know you have already shared can you share it again yes so we talked about three hostels sh1 mayflower and bhagat singh so there will be vacancies they just spread across the hostels but i do understand that there might be a preference from students that i want this hostel only so in such kind of situations they can reach out to me directly they can uh, reach out and we will figure out if there is a we can see available in the preferred hostel and if it is possible we will take that into consideration uh so netra is asking before orientation would like to visit college which date will be preferable uh netra uh, for campus visits uh, the campus is open on uh, monday to saturday uh, you just inform your poc a day prior when you are reaching so that we can plan your campus visit uh, accordingly so timings would be 11 to 4 for the campus visits any other questions uh i hope i have not missed any questions so why while, while you are looking for questions abhishek i just like to plug in and add one more thing here sure. so uh, i i am working here in the university since almost 4 uh, plus years now but i am happy to tell that before i started working here i was also a student at anand so i did the anand fellowship post graduation program i have been a anand student i have been a hostel student and then i have joined here uh, as a employee in my overall experience in anand that in 5 years i am just going through all the different queries and questions and uh, they are being solved i can give my uh, personal comment that as a student when you come here it's a fantastic experience trust me and i am saying this as a ex student as alumnus and also now managing the student life along with the team so uh, i would just like to 
give a word that you can totally rely that this experience, the hostel experience and the student life experience would be a very memorable and a special one that I can assure. And nowhere the management is like uh, saying no to anything. There is always scope for improvement. Any and all kind of ideas are always encouraged. Just wanted to say that out. Thank you, Rohan, for this validation. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine, there is a question. Uh... Is there a specific dress code to be followed in the hostel campus? No, uh, there is no specific dress code to be followed in the campus. But we would encourage that, you know, you, you, you um, dress uh, appropriately and then you, as you conduct yourself in your uh, residence, your home, this is also your second home. So you just have to be a little mindful of the diversity and the people around you. That's it. Thank you. Abhishek, this is the last question. In each room, attached washroom or the common washroom, I think uh, uh, the person wants to say that uh, when we spoke about the, you know, SH1 and the Bhagat Singh, it's a common washroom. But when we, when we say about the Mayflower, is the uh, attached. Each and every hostel is having the different kind of, uh, uh, we can say the uh, facilities and different kind of uh, uh, structure over there. If you say the SH1, then it's a different. The Bhagat Singh is having the little, uh, I can say it's a specific for the girls only. And then we, when we case, say the about the Mayflower, it is just opposite the our gate. It is having the, I can say the attached washrooms. So I, I believe those are the details are already there when we shared uh, our video and other things. So I'm sharing the link to the video which was played earlier. Some uh, some of the students or parents have joined late for the benefit of them. Plus we will be uploading the recording of this uh, session also in coming days. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, queries, sir, uh, where they want to know the uh, PG options. Uh, I think though we have shared this on mails uh, also, but I would request uh, students to just drop a mail or uh, if you have my number, uh, just drop me a message. I will share the list of uh, PG vendors, which our team has visited and uh, verified personally. And then we are sharing. We are not just randomly sharing any numbers with you. Here, there is an interesting question. How can eat children eat? I, I mean, uh, the question How can is like, children eat non veg? Non veg. So, uh, on campus and across, on whatever may be our hostel facility, we are not providing any such kind of a non veg food over there. And, uh, but if you go outside and eat, then we are not restricting you. So, in that case, I'm sorry, we can't share the nearby non veg uh, restaurant list with you. That's not available with us, but that you know very well uh, uh, that could be their uh, surrounding. So if you can go, if you wish to go for the non veg, you can go outside and eat it. There won't be any issue, but inside the campus is not allowed. You can't even order non veg food inside. Yes, the I was just about to add are, that only. We are very clear yeah. about it. We are not judgmental about your eating habits. That's completely fine. We are so so much inclusive, but it is just that that we will not allow uh, non veg food in the campus in any form. Uh, so uh, Urvi, you have questioned that you have paid the booking amount, but uh, there was no uh, option for selection. If you uh, have any preference, you can mail to the admissions mail ID, and uh, based on availability, we'll do consider. Uh, we have already received some mails from the students and uh, based on the first come first serve basis, uh, we are taking preferences. Uh, uh, Rohan, uh, we will be sharing the list of uh, items that they have to carry. Uh, or have we shared any in the past? List of things that students need to carry when they are coming to campus. Yeah, I, I think in the presentation, uh, what we just shared uh, are the things that they will be getting in the hostel. Those are the things that will be provided from our side. Apart from that, anything that students want to carry, they, they are free to carry themselves. For example, you, you can see that the bed is given, uh, mattress and pillow is given, but bed sheet and pillow cover will have to be carried by the student. 
similarly washroom facilities are there but the toiletries and the utility items would have to be of the students so such kind of things whatever is mentioned in the presentation those will be provided from our side apart from that uh, students have to carry their own things and academic related things there is a stationery shop over here they can purchase from here itself uh, related to the hostel any personal use items apart from the facilities provided students have to carry themselves uh, professor jasmine would you like to add anything here in terms of academic things anything to carry no so whatever is uh, is needed we will be sharing that my office academic affairs will uh, share, share all the details in prior so that you are well aware of what you are supposed to carry for your academics right uh, rohan if you can answer one more question uh, are there any in campus jobs can you throw some light on that i also um, sorry i also have one question that is little interesting are pantry expenses included in the hostel fee so i guess they, these are not included in the hostel fee because um, pantry like whatever you are um, buying you know mag whatever you want to cook on your own apart from this four meals this expenses cannot be covered so exactly we do have induction and microwave kept in the pantries but whatever you want to cook needs to be purchased by the student themselves yes adhi you have to manage your own cash ha huh, exactly that's really what i was coming to because there is a very frequent question popping yes, up that yes. do we need Words. to maintain cash yeah or so cool. uh, yeah uh, we don't have any atm at this point of time uh, in the campus Uh, but the nearest uh, atm facility is uh, of A sbi bank which is around 3 uh, kilometers I, i will quickly take a question about the on campus jobs facilities yeah. so we do have on campus job uh, facilities these are like earn while you learn kind of opportunities as we uh, have been discussing there are there is a diverse bunch of students that come here from multiple disciplines and each of them carry some unique and specialized skill sets with them uh at the same time in university there are different departments where it would be an added asset to the department if students can work while they are uh, doing their uh, classes if they are able to maintain and manage both so there are on campus job paid facilities available uh, so these uh, can on campus job interns work with different offices just to name a few uh, some of the campus jobs have been like library assistant or student services assistant hr assistant uh, website designer graphic designer so different kind of uh, opportunities keep coming as and when requirement uh, is there at the same time if there are students who have some really unique and specialized skill they can approach us and they can tell us ki i have this particular skill and this is something where i am an expert can there be on camp campus job facility for me so that will be discussed with jasmine ma'am with all the relative departments and we can also curate on campus jobs where your skills are put to use and also the university benefits from them and this is just uh, just to give a number you know in this particular year there are more than 30 plus students who are, who have worked with uh, us in on campus job paid positions uh, and these are just the paid earn while you learn kind of options while this is happening there are a huge number of opportunities available for students where they are getting certificate and expressions experience certificate also so they can be part of clubs student council different events and different initiatives that keep on happening so some are paid opportunities but some are opportunities where you are given an official certificate and that certificate gets added to you in the portfolio which helps you in the long run to create a very strong portfolio so multiple opportunities to express and work while you are doing your academics are there in the university abhishek can i can i interrupt yes sir I, i can see a lot of apprehension from the parents and the students that our campus is so far so i would just like to clear it clarify this for the uh, uh, time being uh, see our campus is not outside amdabad it is not very remotely located it is very much within the vicinity um from i think i if you can just google search and and look at the map also our campus is just 1 1 km or 1 and a half km far from the last brto stop when we talk about brts and that is bus rapid transit system which is connecting the entire city and there are also lot of metro city uh, stations are also connected to it 
so it's not far and from that for to just cover that one kilometer distance you will get a lot of um, uh, auto sharing autos and yeah uh, a lot of shuttle uh, commu um, commuting also so it is not far so i don't think uh, uh, this could be a problem for the students because we are not remotely located it just within one 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 and a half kilometer you will see all these good stores dominos pizza huts and all other um, important uh, urban areas are just connected to the to the university and this hostel campus and yes all deliveries uh, like flipkart amazon or your blue dot they do come to uh, up to the hostel gate so you can order anything you want I think uh, Abhishek, there there is a, Abhishek I'm sorry to interrupt you. There are certain questions about the you know allocation. Although you have been mentioning about the first come first serve basis, but I think we need to make it very clear that the first come doesn't mean the uh, first the one who have paid the advance fees. Here, the full payment of fees will be considered as a first come first uh, yes. serve. Uh, so there will be communication from the admission side about the you know paying the full fees. So whomsoever is going to pay the full fees, based on that, there will be uh, they will be considered as a first come first serve basis, not on the basis of the advance uh, payment which uh, we have received. And plus, also I just want to um, make uh, audience aware about the certain infrastructure facilities which we are going to come up in the uh, coming years. So in the coming years, uh, by twenty twenty five. Right now, we are having the three three more hostel facilities which are going to come on campus in addition to the SH1, which is having the capacity of 500 students each. So the uh, in addition to the current SH1 and Bhagat Singh on campus, we are going to add the three more hostels on campus. Plus, there are certain other uh, facility, academic facilities also. But as this uh, call is, uh, webinar is regarding the you know student hostel facility, I just want to uh, let the people know okay, that okay, there will be by within a one and a half to two years we will have these additional facilities available on campus. So there's a question by Swapnil that are there any hotels nearby? Uh, so Swapnil, there are like we uh, the admin team have reached out to PG vendors and uh, for you all. So same way we are working on uh, creating a list of hotels. Uh, just give us some time once we have. Uh, get, gather the information and authenticate it, we will share with you all the nearby hotels. Uh, we will be notifying for the balance payment uh, as mentioned in your fee schedule also. Uh, it would be Ju uh, June 9. So we will be opening the portal for all the students at the same time uh, once we have configured the balance fee. Yes, students are allowed to visit places outside campus after they have taken the gate pass permission from the warden. Yes, we will be sharing the Zoom meeting. Uh, we will be, <clears throat> the recording of this session will be sharing soon. Like others, other sessions that we have conducted. So there were many requests of the balance uh, uh, specialized in sessions, but I think the major a uh, query that was coming from students and mostly by parents was to have a session on hostel facility because uh, the board's exams are going on and they can't visit uh, the campus currently. So that's why we have given the priority to the session on hostel. Uh, we'll be following up with the uh, balance to uh, specialization session that is on moving image and uh, communication design in the coming week. Uh, Tanvi, I've already shared the link for the hostel video. I'm sharing with you for the benefit of all once again. Just give me a moment. So apart from this video, there are other videos of uh, hostel life uh, available on YouTube. Uh, apart from hostel life, uh, also uh, the related to academics and head of each specialization that are available on the YouTube channel of Anand Tashul University, you can do visit them. And as I said after Rohan's presentation, that uh, don't just visit our Insta page, please follow them for uh, further updates 
a lot of events are going ha going to happen at anand in the coming days uh, if you are in ahmedabad or if you are visiting on those dates uh, please uh, be a part of those events and uh, some of very renowned artists artisans uh, are coming uh, on uh, by the end of this month can we visit the campus at the end of this month yes you can visit the campus uh, every student who have been offered admission has a poc uh, you have received the mail uh, i think all the pocs have reached out to you through calls or by whatsapp messages uh, just let them know a day in advance when you are visiting so that we can plan uh, properly your campus visit Uh, Yura sir, Jasmine ma'am, Shivani ma'am, Rohan, if you want to add something, if me or Rohan has missed out on any point related to hostel or the campus life. No, I guess most of the things we have already covered. Up. Okay. I think we have already covered, but uh, we are into this uh, since long, so we know, but we want to understand if there are any further questions from the, you know, um these people so because there might be some little little questions and i hope uh, uh, the pocs from the admission team are going to take care about the whatsoever the maybe the whatever maybe the small query so that, yes. so that it gets clarified because as rightly said by jasmine uh ma'am that ke, people are thinking that is far away it's far away it's not far away i can say that my home right now i am feeling i'm in the middle of the so many things, uh, surrounded by the so many buildings. And my home from the university is just four to five kilometers. And as rightly said, the Guma bus stop, BRTS, is just one and a half kilometer, and other uh, facilities are also available. But if still anyone is having any query, then they can definitely reach out to the people. The email IDs are mentioned in our PPT presentations also about the different kind of queries so they so that they can reach out to us. Can we keep our personal vehicle with us in hostel? Yeah, so if yeah, a student is, a is having Yeah, please Sivani. Yeah. So if a student wants to keep a personal vehicle or a cycle, yes, they can. And there is a dedicated place of parking on campus. You will have to keep your vehicle in the parking lot itself. I think there are no further questions uh, coming up. Uh, so I would like to uh, thank you all, Shivani ma'am, Yuvra sir, Jasmine ma'am, Rohan especially, for taking the pain of preparing PPD. I know he's making PPD since yesterday uh, so that uh, no small points also are missed out uh, to be shared with the students. Uh, so thank you all for uh, sparing time on a Sunday morning, the only day we all get some time with family. So thank you for taking out this time uh, and sharing all the details about hostel. Thank you, students. Uh, best of luck for the exams. If you have exams, uh, exams are not over and we would be uh, we are eagerly waiting to see you all in campus like you all are eager to come to the campus uh, I have I, personally uh, communicate in touch with many students who are like sir jaldi campus start karo we want to come and they are very uh, eager to join the campus so uh, we would be happy to have you all in campus soon uh, there is one question which came uh, academic calendar be shared to the students to determine how the breaks. Yes, we will uh, be sharing and I think uh, most probably the... Yes, ma'am, you want to add something? Yeah. So, academic calendar uh, we will definitely share by next week. Uh, the major dates uh, are already shared with the admission team and they yes. can uh, take it forward and share it with them. But then as I mentioned earlier, 10th July is your first day for orientation and followed by orientation week when the regular academics will start. So this semester, we are hoping to conclude somewhere um, after the Diwali break, there might be one or two weeks where you will have to study and then you will have a winter break in which you will also be offered certain winter schools where you can take certain courses. So that is pretty much in place. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So thank you. Thank you everyone for joining in, a, uh, in the session today. Uh, happy weekend.
and uh, uh, we will be uh, sharing the recording of this uh, session uh, mostly by Wednesday and uh, see you soon. Thank you all for joining in the sessions today. Thank you, ma'am. Good luck for your uh, examination. Good exam. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you.